Solo Crota was bound to be beaten. A tale like this is as timeless as Destiny 1 in 2023 sounds. Solo Crota, an adventure, a legend himself, a mix-up of decision-making from Bungie that led to the community's greatest achievement, and one that will never be forgotten. Welcome to this historic tale. I hope you enjoy. I hear some of the footage in this video is from players around the community, and their links are in the description in this video as well as the music too. Well then, guardians mine, enjoy, have fun, and play on, because it won't last. A journey of great stakes for raiders in 2014, Atheon went down in 10 hours and 45 minutes by Team Prime Guard. This day was the mark of an incredible start for Destiny's most enticing activity, the raids. Most players didn't even know the Vault of Glass existed, but for those that did, they loved every second of this atmospheric open landscape rich with challenge and loot. They say you have to be sick to do it. You have to be twisted, different from the rest to pull off a score like this one. Atheon may have taken over 10 hours for a first clear, but with the right plan, time, precision, execution, he could be killed much faster. What is a time god to do when it can't keep up? What is it to do when players become smarter? And in this case, how could Atheon ever hold the name of God when Legend was coming for his throne? A player named Furball had the idea to use self-res to avoid having the whole team teleported on Atheon. And when he realized that brought the minimum number of players down to two in the oracles, this is when he noticed that game mechanics didn't require the full six at all. This simple discovery led to an idea, and this idea led to an achievement that needs to be spoken about. Atheon was too strong to let less than three players beat him in 2014, but with a new raid on the way, the idea was already in Slayer Ridge's mind. How can I beat him? Will he be too strong? Will the mechanics How can one person up? pull this off? Quick break in the action to say that Raid Zone is this Friday with Crota's End as the raid. So make sure you guys are there. Can't wait. I'll see you there this Friday for full coverage of the Day 1 Raid Race. The Dark Below. A decision with this DLC to have the raid release at the exact same time as the DLC and new levels to chase. The Dark Below's release schedule threw a call to action to Slayer Ridge, and he would answer. The World's First was completed shortly after release, in six hours, on December 9th of 2014. But Legend wasn't interested in World's First. Legend was interested in doing something nobody else had ever done before. And to do that first. While the accomplishment of a World's First belt is a legend that cannot be taken away from you, completing world's first of a solo raid boss is the next level, and he would chase that. Slayer spent his entire time focusing on gaining enough levels to be max for Crota. Crota was a level 33 boss, and with Vaults of Glass, you could only reach level 30. To gain these last three levels, you would have to do the raid, and that's the only place you could reach max with the brand new armor equipped. For my character's gear to be good enough to kill Crota, I had to have the highest possible level, and you could only get that by beating the raid, which was on a weekly reset. So, the best thing to do was to run Crota's End on the relevant character, and then once you completed the raid, delete that character, uh, level it from 1 to 20 for 8 hours or however long that took, and then run the raid again and hope you got whatever piece you were missing. And I must have done that at least 13 times, missing, I think, the helmet? And when I finally got level 32, that's when I could actually start putting attempts in. The thing is, you still had to beat an entire raid to get to Crota. To do this, you would have to traverse the lamps by yourself, cross the bridge without teammates holding the totems, defeat the army of ur without so much as another help, and face the strongest of them all at the very end. The raid was still fresh too, and as Slayer said when asked, there were a few players who were going for it at the same time as me, but I don't remember their names, to be honest. It's been a long time, 
But the thing is, at the time, I didn't even stream. So I was just competing with some other players and we had a couple conversations about strategies, but none of them were streaming either. So the pressure to get it done was totally internal. I just had to guess at any point that they're having attempts that were just as close as mine were. And you know, they were right on the cusp of success the whole way through, just like I felt like I might be. It's totally different than these days where you can just watch other players on their streams when they're getting super close attempts in any of the challenges. And I think that the new way that things are is a lot cooler, but it was not, there wasn't a scene at the time. Uh, my clan mates were awesome though for carrying me through leveling up process because there wasn't a following to make that happen at the time. That was just something they did that was very nice of them purely to help me out in a personal goal. Slayer dives into the pit with a patience and time for the invisibility, while aiming down sights and the don't touch me for exotic hunter gauntlets to become invis by being hit from thrall. He's also running Blade Dancer for the Stalker skill. Crouching makes him invis. You may think this is the most untouchable solo to grace the game of Destiny 2, but Slayer dies. This isn't the most confident start, and actually, this entire run has a lot of slip-ups. Slayer takes a lot of damage on this run, and even has someone join his party in the middle of the run. But it's not like he was streaming on his own, this was a challenge he just wanted to chase, and by god, Nitro has talent, was going to make sure he was there for it all. Slayer even has messages throughout the video like the end of the lamps where he acknowledges that he could stand on the rocks, but he just wanted to have fun, even teases the thrall at the end of the tunnel. When Slayer enters the bridge, he pulls off what I can only describe as a Crota moment, and you may be wondering, why is all of this even possible? The answer? This wasn't supposed to be a raid by itself. Crota's End and King's Fall were um, one thing. Like they started off as like one mega concept that then we we had to like split and we had to shelve because the the end of the game was about the Vex and, was, and I was like, the, the raid has to be about the Vex then too. So we had this big hive thing that we wanted to do. We, we like paused that and then um, built this, this whole new raid. Crota and Oryx were a part of the same raid, but someone made the call somewhere along the way to make Crota a raid on its own, and the jank came with it. This cheese that Slayer pulls off is so basic that you might think there's some secret formula to why it works, but there's not. He just formed the bridge enough to jump across. You only needed to kill one gatekeeper knight here because eventually the game just spawned in ogres and wizards. Detecting that you were solo, and every player was across the bridge. Slayer used the exotic sniper rifle Icebreaker to generate ammo in the gun, for him to take down ogres from a distance. Surprisingly, Slayer died more in this small hallway in between encounters than he did at the bridge. Galahorn giveth and taketh away. Slayer moved to Uryut, an encounter with one simple objective. Kill the enemies, kill Uryut, all before her timer kills you simple, right? Well, by yourself, this would prove to be difficult, if not for Galahorn. See, this rocket was so powerful, it might as well have full videos talking about it. With Galahorn, Slayer would be able to clear the whole room in just a few shots, right? There was really no plan here. It was uncharted water, and sometimes, history isn't as pretty as it sounds in our heads, but history cannot be changed, only viewed in the lens of now. Slayer, with an unknown amount of deaths in the future, swapped to Icebreaker for ammo, a scout rifle for ranged attacks, and a machine gun for ad clear. Then he swapped back to Galahorn for a quick cleanse of the enemies. He blade dances into the Shrieker room, pops a couple more Galahorns, then pops a super to get out. Then, with the time ticking, Slayer takes down Ur Youth. Now, Slayer would cut this footage forward to his run because. Well, he failed a lot, and a lot. I wish I had this footage of the failed attempts, but Slayer told me that he lost a lot of the old videos as time went on. 
Getting to Crota was pretty easy because everything leading up to the boss fight against Crota, you can skip some mechanics, you can passively avoid enemies. It was all pure strategy, not necessarily so much execution. And then with Crota, because I didn't know at the time that you could just fire two Galahorn rockets to knock him down, which was super easy to do, and I did it with my really weird convoluted throwing knife method throw from the far side of the arena, the whole thing was just really poorly planned because I didn't know there was a better way, and that led to a lot of deaths to Crota slamming the sword on me, which meant that that was not going to go into a single completion start to finish of the raid run until I had actually gotten some practice and figured out better strategies. Crota was the anime villain of 2014. When Slayer completed his training arc, it was time to make history. Pick up the Chalice of Light so you could heal, kill the sword bearer to gain a sword relic, and damage Crota to take down his shield and put him on a knee for a second. Slayer opted to run Golden Gun and Galahorn to take him down, but in a very unprecedented way, Slayer took Crota down from the sides. See, the boss crotates around the arena to three sides, and typically when you see solo Crota, it's completed in the starting position. But for Slayer, he was breaking new ground, and Crota was taking ground, one knee at a time. After Slayer's video accumulated over 1.6 million views, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing his story. He was the legend himself, to the point where the Legend 27 was more than likely based off of Slayer's tale. Keeps kicking my ass. Is it the Legend 27? Yeah, the Legend 27. Who is the Legend 27? Reddit and articles across the board were sworn with the legend himself. Frodo was the benchmark of challenge not even a month prior in Destiny, and now he was conquered solo. The ways in which players solo this boss deserves its own video. And that is what I will aim to do. But as a tease, it begins with soloing with the worst loadout known to Destiny. And as it goes on, it's soloing him in a hot tub and soloing him blindfolded. It's solo Crota speedruns clearing less than 10 minutes. It's for another video. Thank you for watching and being a part of history with me. I'm so happy to have you here. And until next time, enjoy some bloopers. Mm.
Yeah, yeah, yeah.